Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. Today's episode covers animal cruelty, officer opinion, and local laws, and comes to us from Mac and Bravo's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the episode, I want to give a big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers memberships with meaning, from design, business, freelance, and more, there's over 30,000 classes to explore. Going into 2020, I want to be more productive and efficient, so I took Thomas Frank's Real Productivity class to build reinforcing habits that will help me increase my productivity and create more dynamic content more often for you all to enjoy and learn from. I also learned some very useful and practical tips from Susan Orlean's creative nonfiction course that I can start applying immediately. Skillshare is incredibly affordable. At less than $10 a month for a membership, you won't need to take out a costly loan to learn from skilled professionals. And right now, Skillshare is offering two months of membership completely free when you click on my link in the description. You have nothing to lose, so sign up today and make 2020 the year you explore new skills and strengthen your passions with Skillshare. Tennessee-based YouTube creator and vlogger Mac Proctor makes videos chronicling the vagabond-esque adventures of himself self and his Australian cattle dog, Bravo. Most of Mr. Proctor's content centers around cross-country motorcycle road trips, where Bravo rides along nestled between Mr. Proctor and his motorcycle's gas tank as they tackle everything from long stretches of highway to rugged mountainous terrain. Mr. Proctor and Bravo have ridden thousands of miles together and spent countless hours exploring, camping, and conquering new lands. In March of 2019, Mr. Proctor and Bravo set out on a multi-state trip beginning in Tennessee and crossing through Culver City, California on August 13th, where he was stopped by Officer Hernandez of the Culver City Police Department for allowing Bravo to ride on the motorcycle. So if you don't think that you can get arrested for this right now, even though you got this running, then maybe I should arrest you and we'll test it to see if that your speed that I saw you going on national. I was doing 40 and 40. And your dog laying on your gas container, what you have set up for your dog to, I guess, hold on tight. But if he decides that a pit bull's some, somewhere around here, when you're at a red light and a pit bull attacks him, what do you think he's gonna do? He's gonna run or fight? He's gonna jump off your motorcycle. Do you understand that I have Tennessee plates and my driver's license is from Tennessee? and that we didn't fly here with this motorcycle. We rode it here. I've, I've ridden over 12,000, probably 13,000 miles since March. Okay. I've passed many pit bulls. I've passed German Shepherds. I've passed Dalmatians. Any kind of dog and animal you can think of. We've been in almost every situation mm -hmm. that could possibly cause him to want to jump off of the motorcycle. He has not jumped off the motorcycle. So what about if the pit bull goes up to him? And he and I are both very skilled at doing this. What about if the pit bull goes up to him and tries to bite him? What is he going to do? I I need to know what the outcome of this is going to be because I, I... Why don't we do this, sir? Let me just go ahead and arrest you for this violation and then you'll know the outcome. This is called animal cruelty. This is not it's animal... It's not a citation. This is not animal cruelty. If you feel that I'm Can bothered... Can you get a listen, supervisor, sir, please? Listen, sir, I'm not done here yet. Okay. I'm thinking about arresting you right now, believe it or not. This is arrestable. It's all on video. Your dog's holding on for dear life on your motorcycle and he's no. not tethered he's just holding on to the front uh, gas uh, container so this is where we're going to go if i feel that you understand what's going on here that makes a difference but if you're telling me hey nothing gonna happen this is not animal cruelty i have an issue with that i'm, I'm just telling you nothing has happened so I'm forced with a decision here to give you a citation for animal cruelty or take you in for it. I could do either one. You got you got ID here. I'll take the and citation. Then, well, that's not your choice. So I can carry on. It's not your choice. Everybody would like to carry on after they get arrested. I just don't understand here the part where you don't see the danger in all of this. I really don't understand it. You think that I don't see the, the possibility of danger? with my dog on the motorcycle, there's a possibility of danger of stepping out your front door. There's a possibility of danger of me riding a motorcycle. Sorry, I'm not doing anything outside the law. I looked into it. Show me. Show me.
Show me where you looked into it. Can you show me that there's a law against it? Alright, well, let me, let me just open this door. Let me see what I'm going to do. And then I guess I'll just get back with you. Alright, sir. So this is what's happening. I'll need your, what is your current address? Bicycle, turn on board. So I'm issuing you citation for Penal Code Section 597A. You want to have the specific number. You're subjecting the animal, the animal, the dog, to animal cruelty. Laws regarding animals riding in open vehicles vary from state to state, with some states outlawing the act completely and some states having little to no restriction. The law that Officer Hernandez cited, California Penal Code 597A, states that whoever carries any domestic animal in a cruel or inhumane manner is guilty of a misdemeanor. The code does not clearly define the phrase, in a cruel or inhumane manner, which renders the practical enforcement of this law inherently subjective and based mostly on the opinion of the acting officer. An officer may cite or arrest a citizen for whatever action or circumstance he believes satisfies the language of the law. The presiding judge will ultimately determine whether or not the officer's arrest or citation was based on an accurate interpretation of the code. Nonetheless, Officer Hernandez does have the authority to enforce the law as he understands it and leave it to a court to decide if his interpretation was was correct. Due to the ambiguous nature of Code 597A's phrasing, it is likely that Officer Hernandez would be entitled to qualified immunity in the event that a judge were to rule against him. Is your carrying in an unsafe manner which can cause uh, injury to your pet? Okay, you can uh, transport you vehicles uh, or, 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 or dogs in this okay. manner in the state of California. Now in Memphis and Tennessee, I don't know what the law is. No, well, it's the law in Los Angeles County. Mm -hmm. There's a newspaper article in Los Angeles Times. Mm -hmm. Judge rules dog may ride on motorcycle. This was February 22nd, 1996. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah Gerbrock and his husky fought the law in the fall of one. Okay. After a seven-hour ordeal Wednesday at Van Nuys Municipal Court, Gerbrock of Woodland Hills and a Siberian Husky Harley were declared not guilty of violating section blah 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 blah. What's this section? 21712-A of the California Vehicle Code, the section titled Unlawful Writing. The case that Mr. Proctor is referring to appeared in a 1996 article in the Los Angeles Times and detailed the courtroom appearance of motorcyclist Jeremiah Gerbrach and his Siberian Husky, Harley. In the case, Mr. Gerbrach was charged with violating California Vehicle Code 21712A, which states that a person driving a motor vehicle shall not knowingly permit a person to ride on a vehicle or upon a portion of a vehicle that is not designated or intended for the use of passengers. Municipal Judge Michelle R. Rosenblatt dismissed the case, declaring that the language of Code 21712A only applies to people and that the law mentions nothing that suggests it applies to animals or any other thing. Mr. Gerbrach was allowed to go free and continue riding his motorcycle with his dog. Mr. Proctor is operating under the false assumption that Judge Rosenblatt's decision applies to all other laws within the state of California, but the judge Judge's ruling has no bearing on the code that Officer Hernandez is referring to, Code 597A. So this is what's going to happen. You need to get somebody to get your dog. He's, certainly he's not going to get back on and you're riding off. Otherwise, I'll call animal services and we'll impound your dog. Because, because you seem to think... I asked, well, no, no, no. I asked you these questions of what can happen. You, you asked down. me to speculate about the law. It's not speculating. It's not speculating. You asked me to speculate what would happen if I were involved in a motorcycle accident. What would happen to my dog? I can't, I can't predict the future. And that's why we are where we are. Because if you would have told me, Sir. listen, no, I, no, no, no. This is all just about you talking. Let me explain this, okay? Because I don't think you understand. If you would have told me, you know what? Yeah, probably not the best idea in the world for me to be doing this because my dog could get hurt. That tells me you care about your dog. That tells me that you that you have a heart for your dog because you're not going to subject it to a roadway where it's going to tumble and tumble and tumble and probably get run over by other cars. 
While there is no question that Mr. Proctor is not in violation of Code 21712A, and it is debatable whether Mr. Proctor is in violation of Code 597A, however, Mr. Proctor is clearly in violation of Los Angeles County Code 10.80.010, which states that no person shall transport any dog in or on the back or bed of any open vehicle while traveling on any county road. Subsection B of this code states that this law does not apply to open vehicles which are partially enclosed by stakes, racks, or something similar, which rise at least 2 feet 9 inches above the tops of the sides and back of the vehicle and are designed to prevent the dog from falling or escaping. Considering that Mr. Proctor has no enclosure for Bravo on his motorcycle, it is likely that a court would find him in violation of the county code. But whether or not Officer Hernandez was within jurisdiction to legally enforce Force the county code is a topic for another video. But because I'm seeing here that you're very cold hearted, that you won't even admit to the possibilities. You're telling me the law I'm says, not. the law says in the past, I'm looking up sections that they won, so I can Am do I require this. require my law to agree with, with your opinions? No, of course not. Okay, well then of course not, but I'm just telling you that. I've done nothing wrong. I'm telling you, you have. I could actually book you for this. I'm not going to. You have an ID. Did you're not you you're not wanted you in any state. Of course I'm not. Okay, so that's why you're getting a ticket and you're going to leave. But I can't let you put the dog back on and leave. Is, is there so the sooner he can get here, the better. Otherwise, I'll call animal services. Under the Fifth Amendment, suspects cannot be forced to incriminate themselves, and the Fourteenth Amendment prohibits coercive questioning by police officers. Confessions to crimes that are coerced are not admissible against defendants in criminal cases, even though they may be true. Here, Officer Hernandez states that if Mr. Proctor had chosen to verbally acknowledge the danger associated with dogs riding on motorcycles and admit that he knowingly and carelessly put the dog in danger, then the interaction would have had a more positive positive outcome. It appears as though Officer Hernandez's statement suggests that if Mr. Proctor had admitted to the crime he was being accused of, then he would have faced lesser repercussions. It could be argued that Officer Hernandez is coercing a confession from Mr. Proctor, and even if Mr. Proctor had agreed with the officer's opinion, it likely would have no bearing on the legitimacy of the charges. Where are you? Um, Culver City, 3523. Eastham, Eastham Drive. It's at National and Jefferson Boulevard. I'll refund Julie for the gas or anything. There's also another violation too. You gotta have a leash. I have a leash. Yeah, well you gotta use it. Okay, well he was on the motorcycle and you stopped me. I have a leash in my pocket. You put him on your leash and you Bravo. Come on, load up. Load up. Yeah, East Ham. East Ham, yeah. He's very well trained, I'll give you that. He doesn't mind, right? But I'll tell you this, he's an animal whether you like it or not. He's not a person. I know you want to believe that. I, you he's know, still an animal. They're, they're going to they're gonna act like animals when emergencies occur. And you know what he'll probably do because he's so smart? He'll probably try jumping off your motorcycle to try to save himself. Probably resulting in his death by doing that. Officer Hernandez issued Mr. Proctor a citation for animal cruelty under Section 597A and allowed Mr. Proctor's friend to come pick up Bravo before leaving the scene without further incident. Mr. Proctor traveled to San Francisco and returned to Culver City for his arraignment, where he was notified that the arrest had been changed to a detention and that there was no need to be processed or appear in court the following day. Mr. Proctor filed a formal complaint against Hernandez that day, and internal affairs denied Mr. Proctor access to the police report and body cam footage of the interaction, citing the pending investigation against Officer Hernandez. Overall, Officer Hernandez gets a C- because although he was within his authority to enforce Code 597A, he displayed a distasteful lack of professionalism and attempted to coerce Mr. Proctor into admitting some degree of guilt throughout the interaction. Officer Hernandez threatened Mr. Proctor with arrest several times for questioning 
questioning his authority, and the officer allowed his ego to dictate the tone of the interaction. It certainly could be argued that a dog riding on a motorcycle presents a legitimate safety concern on a public roadway. However, it could also be argued that a well-trained canine with many hours of riding experience presents less of a threat to public safety than an inexperienced human riding on the back of a motorcycle. Officer Hernandez refused to acknowledge the context of Bravo's riding experience, but courts are charged with the duty of considering the totality of circumstances of any case, and it is likely that Bravo's riding experience will play a major role in determining whether his riding conditions were in fact cruel or inhumane. Mr. Proctor gets a B, because although he was misinformed about the legality surrounding Judge Rosenblatt's ruling, he still remained calm throughout the encounter, refused to admit guilt or agree with Officer Hernandez's opinion, and did not back down when threatened with arrest. Mr. Proctor's calm and controlled candor and developed conversational skills served him well during this encounter, and I commend him for his wise and strategic use of dialogue. While Mr. Proctor was technically in violation of a county code, whether or not he was in violation of Code 597A is up to the courts, but his collected demeanor and intelligently executed opposition to Officer Hernandez's charges will likely pay off in the courtroom. If you haven't already, I highly suggest checking out Mr. Proctor's YouTube channel and consider subscribing. Although Mr. Proctor's channel does not usually feature police interactions, the adventures of Mac and Bravo are thoroughly entertaining. If you choose to subscribe, let him know that Audit the Audit sent you. Let us know if there's an interaction or legal topic you would like us to cover in the comments below. Be sure to check out our Patreon for ad-free, uncensored, and exclusive episodes. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content.